We're going to make some booklets for the Midori Traveller's Notebook and I've got here, which I've printed off um, from my site, the basic template for a bullet journal. In fact I've got a couple. We're going to be making two of these today and we're going to make two because I'm going to show you two different methods of binding it. Um, before we can bind it, we need to fold it into a booklet. Now, this is on A4. If you've printed the letter paper version on letter paper, this is going to work very similarly. The bit that I won't show you if you're on letter paper is, letter paper is a little bit taller, a little bit narrower. Um, the narrowness doesn't matter because you're only going to chop the sides off anyway, but, but in terms of its, uh, of its height, um, you are going to need to chop uh, the top and the bottom off um, a little bit um, so that you finish with something that's the same height as this landscape A4 which is 210 millimetres. So with that done, all that's a step you can do at the end, we're now going to start folding. Now if you look at all of the uh, tutorials on this, and there are lots of them um, online, they'll tell you that each individual page needs to be folded um, individually um, and my view on that is life's just too short. I generally do a booklet in three or four different batches. So there's the first batch, here's the uh, second. Now it's pretty important while you're doing this, particularly if you've got uh, a printed booklet rather than just plain paper or, or plain grid or lined or something, um, to make sure that you keep the pages sorted out. On the bullet journal, it's very easy to do this because all of the pages are numbered uh, and that helps enormously. Here's the third batch which is the outside. You can now put that on the outside of the other ones that I did. And I've now got uh, my booklet. And a quick flick through will you know, make it clear that I've assembled that properly and that the pages are in the right order. It's still too wide. We're not going to worry about that yet. That will be our final step. <coughs> Excuse me. What I want to do now is put a cover on it. Uh, now for your cover, you're going to use some um, cardstock and later on I'll show you some of the other things that you can use and some of the ideas that you can employ um, to produce a, a, a fancy cover. Um, but for now we're just going to use something fairly plain. It's, it's a leather textured report cover. It's about um, 220 GSM maybe. Uh, that's grams per square meter if that's not a, a measure that you're comfortable with. And it's somewhere between um, a piece of uh, a piece of paper um, and the side of a cereal box. It's it's kind of thinner and floppier than that, but uh, much thicker than than regular paper. Um, it provides quite a nice um, combination of flexibility and firmness. Now, what you want to do is is score that right down the centre. Now, if you've got a nice marked cutting mat like this one, you can measure the centre. Um, using the lines on the cutting mat fairly accurately. If you haven't, then simply get a, a, a ruler and, and measure the dead centre uh, with a pencil at top and bottom and then it's just a matter of scoring down that. And uh, as ever for scoring I'm using the screwdriver attachment of a Swiss Army knife. Now with a decent firm score down there you can just push that fold down And there you are, you've got a, uh, a decent cover. Put the pages inside the cover and kind of get those all aligned and you're pretty much ready to go. Now again, what the tutorials that you generally see are going to tell you to do here is to use binder clips and clip the thing up so that it's kind of in a vice-like arrangement. Well, you know, you can do that if you want to. Um, or you can just hold it carefully so that the things don't fly apart as you're working.
Now the first method that I'm going to show you for this uh, is the, uh, the easy method. Um, and it's the one that I normally use now, uh, which is to staple. Now you can't use a regular stapler for this job. Um, because, well, unless you've got a stapler um, where you can get the kind of mouth of the stapler, as it were, right all the way down to here. Uh, generally, that's not going to be possible with your regular stapler. Here's a type of stapler that will do this. It's called a long arm stapler. Um, you can pick them up for, uh, I don't know, £10, $15 or so um, in a, a, a specialist stationery store. And it's like half a stapler that's put on a, well, a long arm, does what it says on the tin, um, which enables you to, to slide something in here and, and this grip will move back um, so that you can get all of the way into there and then you, you will staple along the spine of the book twice, maybe top and bottom. That's okay, it, it's quite difficult to get it very, very accurately placed in the centre. Also, a long arm stapler, it's, it's kind of a, a single use uh, stationary item which you may not want to spend all of that money on uh, for such infrequent use. What you can do is get one of these, which at, at first glance looks like um, an ordinary stapler. But it does, and, and you can use it as an ordinary stapler, which is why it's quite economical, because, you know, you, you, you'd find all sorts of uses for this. But then it does something clever, watch. Okay, this part swings out, so that I can now staple, as it were, sideways. In fact, I'd do it the other way up, I'd staple from the outside in. And I can staple along the spine, like that. Um, that's pretty good as well, but again, you've got the difficulty of aligning that perfectly with the centre. So what I use for this is oh, one of these, a specialist um, saddle, sit, uh, saddle stapler. Oof, that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, these are about, oh, oh, I don't know, £50, $70 or so. Um, so you probably wouldn't want to buy one if this was your only use. But I think they're absolutely fantastic because all I need to do at this point is just line my pages up, sit it there as it were on the saddle and this will this will centre kind of without me doing anything really. Gravity will, will pretty much do the job. It sits at the peak of that hill and you just staple through it. Uh, I've also got the edges here um, of, of the saddle which serve as a guide so that I always get the staples um, in pretty much the same place, the same distance from the edge which it, you know if you're doing it by eyeball is, can be really tricky. So there's my booklet um, all stapled and we're going to see that again at the end when I've made the other booklet uh, when we look at cutting them. So let's put that to one side and then we'll make a second booklet. Okay, so let's look now at the second method of binding. This is stitching. I've made another bullet journal and cover, got it to the same stage as last time when we, when we bound it. That time we used staples, this time we're going to stitch. Now stitching is a good way without investing in too much fancy equipment, um, that you'll, you'll get a really uh, professionally bound booklet. Um, it takes a little more time than the stapling, but, but the result's pretty good actually. The first thing you're going to need is, is one of these. It's a sort of uh, a pad that you've sacrificed for this job. You could use a, a pile of newspaper if you want. The problem with using a pile of newspaper is that you're going to be resting this against it and pushing down quite hard and you don't really want newsprint um, to, to, to come out onto the, the cover itself. So I'm not going to go that way. Um, you need this because you're going to be pushing one of these, a big spike, um, down through all of these pages and if you do it onto your cutting mat, your cutting mat is going to be full of holes in no time. 
um, and, and will lose its effectiveness as a, a surface on which to cut uh, with a knife. So you probably don't want that. Um, this is a beading awl. Um, you can get them from craft shops or you can buy them online. They're a, they're a couple of pounds. Uh, they're very nice, they're very useful. People also use um, push pins, thumbtacks, drawing pins, whatever you want to call them. A um, little bit fiddlier, not quite as accurate, uh, and, and requires a surprising amount of pressure to go through all the paper and card uh, that it's going to have to. So this is a relatively small investment, I'd go with it. The other things that you're going to need to invest in for this are some sort of um, thread. Uh, I, people use dental floss for this. Um, you can also use a fairly thin fishing line. What I use, uh, and you can buy it in the crafts, craft store where you get this, um, is this stuff. It's, it's beading and stringing thread. Uh, it's really, I buy it because it's really strong. I've never had this snap on me and I don't expect it to. And I use the 0.2 millimeter version or the 0.008 inch if you insist on uh, the old-fashioned measures. Um, it's really good stuff. So that's what we're going to use. And needle-wise, um, uh, an embroidery needle. Uh, short, with a nice decent sized eye. It doesn't have to be overly thin because you're going to make quite big holes here to get it through. So so just do something that's that, that, that focuses on usability rather than smallness. But before we can do any of that, we need to, to make some holes in here. Now for, sta uh, for saddle stitching, you need an odd number of holes along the spine. And again, this is where people will tell you to, to clamp this up so that it can't move, but you know what? Life's too short. Um, you need an odd number of holes, as I say. One of them is going to be dead centre, and then to the right of the hole you need, uh, I don't know, what, either one or two more holes, and to the left you need uh, a, an equal number of holes. You can do more if you want, but in my experience it doesn't give it any, any more strength or, or stability. Now you can do that by eye, you can get out a ruler and measure it, but, but my trick is to use a piece of string. Now this piece of string uh, I have applied a ruler to and I've marked it out. That mark there um, is the central hole and then if I'm using a five hole uh, configuration I also pierce through the other black holes. If I'm using a three string I do the central hole and then these two pink holes um, and that way I don't have to use um, a ruler and measure it every time. I just lie this loosely along um, the valley of the spine of the piece and then using the awl make sure I'm right down in the valley and punch a hole right through. Now I'm going to do um, I think a, a three hole on this occasion. If you want to see exactly how the threading works on a five hole uh, you can have a look on my site and there are a couple of pages which illustrate um, how you do that with, with pictures. Now hopefully you can see I've got one, two, three holes there. At this point I'd normally turn it upside down and just make sure that they've actually come out on the other side, which they have. And you'll notice they've come out right on the spine, uh, which is exactly where I wanted them, um, without having to clamp the whole thing together, uh, which is nice and convenient. So put all of that to one side, I can now start the stitching. So I need a length of thread and as a, as a rough guide you want about mm, two times the length of the spine. Okay, so there's my um, embroidery needle, duly threaded. Now, you can either start this on the inside or you can start it on the outside. Um, if you start it on the inside, you're going to have um, the ends tied off on the inside and you'll have a, a little bit of uh, uh, messy, not very much, um, but a little bit of messy ends on the inside. 
or you can uh, start on the outside, in which case you're going to be cutting off loose ends on the outside of the booklet. It's up to you. I always start on the inside. But either way, you want to go first through the central hole, pull it through so that there's uh, still a length left behind, and then put it through either one of the end holes, um, and pull in so that it's tight. Then put it through the other end hole. So what you've actually got here is um, a big loop all the way across. Now, the last thing you want to do, and this can be a little bit tricky, is push from the outside, from the other side, into the middle hole. Now, what you need to do at this point is to make sure that you may not be able to see this too well on the video. The central loop there has one piece of string coming out from the underside of each side of it. If not, then pass this through to the other side using the needle. But here, what I've got is two pieces of string coming out, and right down the middle of them um, lies the central, central loop. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to tie these two pieces in a little knot, as if I were tying them as shoelaces, pull that really tight, as tight as I can, and then do another knot on top of it. doesn't really matter if you end up with a reef knot or a granny knot, the, the thread is so thin you won't be able to, to see. And right down in that crevice there, uh, there is um, a knot. So what you need to do at this point, sharp scissors or sharp knife, is just to cut that loose end so that there's just a, a tiny bit on each of the two ends. And you've now bound your book and on the outside um, looks pretty neat. On the inside you've just got these uh, hanging ends which as I say you could have on the outside if you wanted to. Um, I've made some nice new holes in the pad which I'll put to one side to use another time. So I now have two booklets. I've got this one which is stapled, I've got this one which is stitched, uh, but otherwise they're the same. Now what I need to do at this point to make them Midori sized is to cut down their width to uh, 110 millimeters. Um, I tend to do this a little bit generously just in case because if the edge um, isn't perfectly straight um, after I've done it once then I've got a little bit of room to work in so I usually go for about 111 um, and if it's right first time then you know what it's a millimetre wider that's fine so you can either measure this um, using pencil marks uh, and then cutting down but as you can imagine I make quite a few of these so I've developed a shortcut which is I have this uh, contrivance that I've rigged up which is a, a, a marked cutting mat again marked so that you don't need to get a ruler out and measure every time uh, and I've kind of super glued to it some some thick rulers so as to make a, a, a firm edge at one side so what that works in the same way as, as say a set square would so if I push the um, booklet right up against this firm edge here I can then put the ruler down and where I've marked the appropriate width, I can then cut. Now at this point you can use a craft knife or a Stanley knife, but you, I found you get best results with, with one of these, uh, a, a rotary cutter. So that's what I'm going to use. You don't have to push down particularly hard. If you do, you'll do it more quickly, but it doesn't have to be too hard. So there's one of them. That's the stapled one, and I now have um, my bullet journal booklet, uh, which is the right width to sit inside my Midori Traveller's Notebook. I'll use exactly the same approach on the stitched one. So here's one of the booklets that we just made. Um, we used a, a, a red report cover for that with a nice leather grain. There are clearly all sorts of 
finishes you can use. One of the things that I do is I take some plain white card and I, I print onto it. Um, and then after I've printed on it, I use that as a cover. So you can print something nice and typographic, or you can print uh, a map, um, either a modern one or an ancient one, um, or you can find something pictorial maybe. Um, I find that a useful thing to add to your search term is, is grunge, because if you add grunge to your, your search term, you come up with something that's got a bit of an interesting texture about it, like this. But one thing that you'll notice is that there is a, a difference between these ones that I've made before um, and this one that we've just made. And look at this, it's in its springiness. That one stays closed, um, like you would want it to. Uh, this one doesn't. So, how do you get them to stay closed? Well, I could sit here with a bone folder and I could fold that down a couple of times. Um, and it would make some difference, but not much of one. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use uh, this. Whew. This is what um, they call a book press. Uh, you can you can probably buy these commercially, I suppose, in a specialist store. But but I made this one. It's it's two bread balls, um, two big um, chopping balls. If I were doing it again, I would probably get thicker bread balls than this, um, just to prevent any possibility of them. Um, warping and, and then I've drilled through both of them and put coach bolts through um, and on the other side of the coach bolts um, I've got um, a, a plain washer um, and then uh, one of these wing nuts. So I've also got a, a, a cabinet door handle that I've then screwed to the top so that I can I can lift that up easily and then I don't know how easily you can see this. When it opens on the inside, I've sort of lined it by sticking some um, card to, to the upper and lower surfaces here so that, you know, if there is any, any stickiness, um, that doesn't come off on, on what you put in here. So I'm going to put this book in here. Um, I'll put another one in next to it. Um, and then just push them in slightly and then if I tighten these wing nuts down and just leave it in there for a, for a couple of hours or, or overnight um, what will then happen is it will squash those down and make them you know stay closed it will it will mold them into a, a, a more permanent fold uh, that behaves itself um, like like these ones, which which don't spring up, um, they sit quite happily um, as they are until you start using them. So that's the book press. Um, fairly easy to to make if you want one, um, and it's a it's a nice finishing touch. So that in a nutshell, or rather the uh, you know two or three nutshells probably, is how to make uh, and finish off your own booklets for the Midori Traveller's Notebook.